are very close to each other because we are going to do a gradient descent or estimated gradient descent, so we are going to, uh, to have small steps. And uh, so uh, we can assume that uh, the distributions are close. Uh, now, you have the relative entropy or pullback Leibler divergence. which is KL, and now uh, it's not symmetric, and there are two conventions in the literature, and I never remember which is which, but this is the expectation, this is the difference in entropy, uh, basically, so it's uh, the expectation for X following the law of P of the logarithm of, uh, of p plus uh, of p of x divided by p plus delta p of x and um, this is always positive and this is uh, zero when p plus delta p when the two distributions are equal and so um, it means that it's a second order object. So uh, you can expand it at second order in uh, p plus the in, in delta p. So it's the expectation. Uh, it's twice actually, I think. Uh, no, it's one half. Sorry, one is the. Hessian of the other. Yes? Ah, oh, sorry. So, if you expand this at second order, uh, you get that this is approximately one half times the expectation for x under p of uh, the, uh, well, uh, the variation of log p of x squared. So you move from p plus delta p for each x, that means that you move from p of x to delta p of x. You have the variation of log p of x, which is the variation of p of x divided by p of x. And you can square this and take the uh, expectation for x uh, following the log p. And this gives you uh, the second order expansion of the pullback Leibler divergence. And since this is quadratic in P, in that P, this is a metric. The, this is a norm on the space of P's. So, uh, at least locally, depend, uh, this is a norm on delta P which depends on the current point P. So if P, if delta P, if P depends on theta and delta P is uh, the variation of P that comes from a variation of theta, theta plus the theta minus P theta, so at first order this is uh, the derivative of P with respect to theta times theta theta, you find that you get a metric on theta, uh, which is uh, the expectation for x uh, following p theta of the variation of the logarithm of p theta uh, square. Uh, this means that if you have uh, so the derivative with respect to theta is a vector, and uh, this uh, this uh, so I need to introduce some more notation, but. Um, So, for any vector delta theta, the, 
this is you have to apply the uh, the derivative uh, to to the to the vector to the variation of theta and uh, square the result and this gives you a quadratic form in delta theta in the variation of theta and now what is important is that this quadratic form quadratic form on delta theta does not depend on any choice of basis for theta it only depends on what the distribution p theta looks like so now this is the Fisher information Mean trick. Uh, metric is just a quadratic form that depends on where you currently are, that depends on the current point. And this Fisher information metric is given by a Fisher information matrix uh, because if you decompose theta in, a, in any given basis, this is given by a, a symmetric matrix whose components are uh, the partial derivatives of the logarithm with respect to uh, theta uh, uh, square. In each component, the ij component is the derivative with respect to theta, theta i times the derivative with respect to theta j. So now, what happens if you use this matrix for your original problem? I'm going back to uh, black box optimization. Uh, that is, um, to finding uh, to uh, my problem, which was optimizing f of x, I have transferred uh, f of x to f bar of theta by use of uh, family of probability distributions on x. And now I want to. Uh, I have a current guess, guess, current guess of where theta a is, and I am going to update it by using this. How do you do this in practice? So, the point is, uh, you can uh, replace this gradient. So, if you have any gradient, uh, so I'm going to denote by set a tilde, this is the gradient. with respect to the Fisher information metric. So this is the natural gradient, so-called natural gradient. And here I have to mention the name of Sanichi Amari, because he was really the one to advocate the use of the natural gradient and to uh, prove many uh, important properties of it, especially in the learning context. Uh, he proved that using the natural gradient leads to uh, optimal, uh, um, optimal variance for the estimates of, of theta in some, uh, in some situations. Um, the Fisher information me uh, metric itself is much older, as the name indicates. I think it was Rao, actually, rather than Fisher, that uh, who, uh, who defined it, uh, who realized that uh, you have a canonical distance uh, between any two uh, probability distributions uh, in 45, in 1945, I guess. Um, so now my new problem is to have um, to define um, uh, to follow the natural gradient in the space theta. So the new problem is theta prime equal theta plus epsilon times the natural gradient of f bar of theta. Why is this better than the original problem? Well, if you want to uh, have numerical optimization of uh, function uh, f of x, 
You have plenty of methods available. You have the uh, Newton methods, you have quasi-Newton methods, you have uh, a whole uh, list of them. Mostly, these methods are good uh, locally. If you are close to an optimum, then the Newton method converges very, very quickly. But if you are far from the optimum, of, if you have, if your uh, function path is very complicated, it might even not be differentiable. Um, so you're going to have a very complex uh, landscape, uh, which you have to explore then using randomized strategies uh, coming from genetic algorithms, uh, like trying an X and then trying another X a further bit away, uh, this is going to, uh, to perform better in practice. So it depends on the shape of the function and the regime you are in. If you are close to an optimum, then you don't need all this. But if you have to explore around, then you will need this. So how do you uh, work with this natural gradient of f bar? So one important thing here is that f bar is an expectation under uh, p theta. It's an integral of f of x p theta of x, of, of dx actually, because p theta is a measure, it's a probability measure. And so if you want to take the gradient of this, any gradient in any matrix, oh, this is uh, an integral of the gradient of log of p theta, and this rewrites, this is very important, this rewrites as an expectation under p theta by using that gradient of p theta is equal to the gradient of log p theta. So this is a gradient with respect to with respect to theta times p theta. And this is something you can sample for. I mean, if you want to uh, uh, evaluate this gradient, what you can do is uh, sample a few values of x from p theta, compute how their probability would change if you change theta a bit. This you can do if you know the shape of p theta. If you know p theta is a Gaussian with a given mean and covariance, you can compute the derivative of the probability of the point if you change the mean and covariance a bit. And uh, then you can approximate the integral with a Monte Carlo samples x from them. Um, the uh, the gradient, to compute the gradient, you have to compute the Fisher information matrix and this you can often do if you know the shape of your models because it's, as I said, a product of derivatives uh, with respect to theta and uh, for Gaussian distributions we can do it explicitly, we know, uh, we know uh, the exact value of the Fisher information matrix. So this is in any basis uh, the gradient, the natural gradient is the inverse of the Fisher information matrix times the uh, derivative, the uh, coordinate wise derivative with respect to theta, uh, which you know if you know if you have uh, if you have a specific family of B theta. And so in principle, you can do everything. Uh, so in principle, you uh, can uh, move in theta space by using samples. And so this means, what does this mean? It means that if you have a current space on which you want to optimize f, if you have a current belief on where the good points are, you can just uh, take a few samples from the current belief, compute how uh, the probability of, the, of these samples uh, would change uh, if you change that a bit, weighted by the good values. Of course, 
in this integral to give higher weight to uh, good values of x. This is a move of theta towards x. So this gradient tells you how to adjust theta to increase the probability of a particular sample of x. And you weight this by whether x has a good value or a bad value. And then you move your theta, you update your belief about where the good points lie. And so you have a trajectory in theta space, and hopefully, in the end, the, the trajectory of uh, the distribution d theta converges, uh, concentrates around only the optimal value of x. Um, there is still one thing that you can do here. Well, you will notice that there is no derivative at all with respect to f, which is a bit surprising. But this is why, in my opinion, this is why these kind of approaches work better. Because you have a kind of um, regularizing effect. You integrate f against p theta, and if f is not smooth, for instance, uh, the function f bar will be smooth as a function of theta. Because you integrate it, you take a convolution with a ga uh, Gaussian or whatever. And so this is regularizing. Um, what else? Yes, uh, actually in practice we do not use the integral of f and x because there is one additional invariant property uh, which you would like to have. Well, I said uh, a few minutes ago, if you uh, take the standard gradient ascent of x and if you encode x in millimeters or centimeters or inches, uh, it's going to give you different trajectories. 